Today I'm going to read Being Edie is Hard Today by Ben Brashares and Elizabeth Bergeland. Being Edie is Hard Today, written by Ben Brashares, illustrated by Elizabeth Bergeland. For Louisa, for Worth, Adlai, and Alouette. Being Edie was hard today. She barely made it to breakfast. Please eat your toast, Edie, her mom, her mom said. I'm too tired to eat my toast, Edie replied. Please sit up, Edie, her mom said. I can't, Edie said. My head is too heavy. Pony or Piggy, her mom asked while they waited for the school bus. Piggy, please, mother, Edie answered. When the bus arrived, Edie reminded her that piggies don't go to school. This little piggy does, her mom said, and scooted Edie out the door. She had made a mistake. A pony would have been much better. While putting her things away, Edie thought for a moment about climbing into her cubby, maybe just hanging there, like a bat, until it was time to go home. In class, Miss Meany called on Edie to write on the board, but Edie didn't know the answer. I can't, she said. Why can't you, Edie? I have polar bear hands, she said, and showed her. At recess, Edie sat in her favorite spot and ate her favorite snack, sardines. Only squids eat sardines, one boy said. Edie, the stinky squid, they sang. Edie, the stinky squid. And they circled her like sharks. The rooster did not like that very much. Oh, to be a squid. Alone, she sat on the swing where she'd go to think and imagine she had great wings that could take her high above, but the wings never worked. So she decided to be a cheetah, the fastest, fiercest animal on earth. Her stomach grumbled, the lunch bell rang. And she was off. During her rather long trip to the principal's office, wait a minute, did we miss something? No. During her rather long trip to the principal's office, Edie tried to explain the slow moving characteristics of a sloth, but Miss Meany wasn't listening. Edie figured if she just sat still enough. The principal probably wouldn't see her. Edie, 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 Edie. Chameleon was definitely the right choice. For the ride home, Edie considered a porcupine or a hissing cockroach. Eventually, she decided to be an armadillo but inside she felt like a naked mole rat. At dinner, Edie was lost in thought. Edie, would you like to use your fork? Mom asked. No, thank you, Mother. This is how butterflies taste their food. When it was time for bed, Edie found that she had, unfortunately, become a worm. Edie, ease come rush or ease. I can't, I don't have teeth or hands even. Honey, come pick out your clothes for school tomorrow, Edie's mom called from the other room. Worms don't go to school, Edie yelled back, but her mom didn't hear her. 
because people can't hear worms. The floor was uncomfortable, so Edie found her feet and pulled herself up to the mirror. She hoped to see something new, but she only saw Edie. Edie, who had to go to school tomorrow. Edie sat on her bed and held her knees as tears filled her eyes. Mom, she said, I don't think I want to go to school tomorrow. Just saying the words made the tears jump out. Her mom stroked her arm and let her cry. Did you know, her mom finally said, reaching out to collect a tear, that humans are the only creatures on earth that cry tears when they're sad. And no one really knows why. Edie looked up and wiped her eyes. I think I do. It's just like why the sky cries when it's sad, she said. I learned about it in school, Edie went on. The clouds get dark and fill up with tears, and then, when the clouds can't hold any more, the tears fall all the way down to the ground, where they help make flowers grow and make streams for animals and drink out, to drink out of and take baths in. Edie's mom smiled. So, does the sky feel better after it cries? Oh yeah, Edie said. The clouds get all fluffy again and the sun comes out. You feeling a little fluffier, her mom asked, pulling her in for a hug. Yeah, I guess like a fluffy baby owl. Owls are nocturnal, you know, so I'm going to stay up all night, night, Edie. Pony or piggy, her mom asked the next morning. Piggy, please, mother, Edie replied. No, wait, pony. You sure, her mom asked. Pony and pig, Piggy, and anteater, frog, lemur, lion, hedgehog, and flying squirrel. Okay, but no cheetahs today. Her mom kissed the top of her head. Better yet, how about you just go as my favorite little girl, Edie? Edie thought for a moment. Yeah, okay, I guess being Edie's pretty good too. Tell you about the author. Ben Brashares lives in Montclair, New Jersey with his wife, three children, a dog, a cat, a mouse, and a lizard. He writes about his life and stay-at-home dad as a stay-at-home dad in a blog called The Sad Life, S-A-H-D for stay-at-home dad. Ben holds an MFA in creative writing and has written for Rolling Stone, Men's Journal, and Entertainment Weekly. Elizabeth Bergland received a BFA in painting from the University of Colorado and works primarily with oils, watercolor, and pencil. Elizabeth grew up in Denver, Colorado, but now lives in Philadelphia with her husband and their three children in a quirky old row home. Ben and Elizabeth met in the playground of their children's preschool. Both artists, they bonded over their mutual parental exhaustion and the energizing wonder of watching children encounter the world. A few years later, Elizabeth sent Ben a drawing of a little girl in animal furs carrying a fish and wrote, her name's Edie, write a story about her. And a partnership was solidified. This is their first children's book. Maybe there's some of you out there. I know you like to collaborate at school. Maybe someone could write an idea down and send it to another friend and say, hey, I'd like to do drawings about this. Or I have a character in mind. Will you do drawings for me about this? could be pretty neat to collaborate on a graphic novel or a story together. Have a great day, everyone.